Recently, I decided to play Risk of Rain 2 with some friends of mine. During one of our runs, a member of our party decided to go on a huge rant about how hard it was to get Captain's Diablo strike. At first, I didn't think much of it. Until they told me how long they'd been trying. This guy mains Captain. How can you struggle to get an achievement this badly? And then it hit me. You're just as fucking dumb! First things first, if you lot need me to hold your hand through this, then so be it, but I'm gonna have to lay some ground rules. Rule number one, no DOTs. Any item that can bleed, burn, or slowly chip away at enemy health bars are strictly prohibited. Rule number two, avoid any chance-based items unless I say otherwise. Rule number three, shut the fuck up, strap in your seatbelts, and get ready, because we're getting this fucking show on the road. Prelude. Start by opening the game, click play, select captain, choose the hacking beacons, and enable the artifact of command. If you can't see it, it looks like this. If you still can't see it, then drag your dumbass over to this stage, go to this teleporter, type in this code, and survive the bulwarks ambry to get it. Now with that out of the way, let's get moving. Step 1. Begin by hurtling yourself into the planet's atmosphere and breaking every bone in your body. Now kick the fucking door off its hinges and take in the scenery. Welcome to hell, asshole. Now start screaming! Once you've somehow killed enough of the native inhabitants to earn some cash, open your first few chests and pick up some movement speed, some passive healing, and anything that buffs crit. Our objectives before we reach the final stage are to have capped crit at 100% and enough survivability that even someone as dumb as you won't die. If at any point in the run you stumble across one of these equipment barrels, take it and bear with me here. Pick up the eccentric vase. You'll see why pretty soon. Pick up whatever other items you can scavenge or unlock with your beacons, always prioritizing crit. The maximums of each is nine pairs of glasses and three for both greens. Then start the teleporter, kill the boss, and pick up one last item to head to the next stage. Editor's note, if one of you idiots somehow got a boss item to drop and are wondering what to get, you don't have a choice. We aren't taking any chances here, just pick the rock. Who knows, maybe it'll dampen your ineptitude enough to keep you alive for a few more seconds. Step two. All right, so you've somehow survived the first stage. I don't know why I'm impressed. If you've already got a couple of scythes and feel like you can kill a boss as you are, then your next green should be the feather. Mobility is key on Captain, and if I've got to keep your useless ass alive and kicking, then we've got to keep you agile. Keep prioritizing crit whenever you see a white item, and if you feel like you're not hitting often enough, pick up a singular syringe or another predatory instincts. With that out of the way, let's get the teleporter started, kill the boss, pick up another feather, and head to the next stage. Step 3. Alright, you're somehow alive and a third of the way there, but this is where things get interesting. Here you'll finally start seeing the hordes of enemies Risk of Rain 2 is known for. You're gonna need some AoE. Here lies the singular exception to rule number 2. When you come across your next green, make it a ukulele. The reason why this item is allowed is because it won't have any adverse effects during our Mithrix fight. There's only one of Mithrix, and the electricity can't jump to the same target, so it won't damage him accidentally. Knowing you, picking up anything else would just lead to you killing him prematurely, and I'm not dragging your ass through here a second time. As I've said before, we're aiming for capped crit here, so any whites you see get turned into specs. Once you hit a total of nine, start stacking movement speed and pick up a teddy bear or two. Lord knows you're gonna need it. If you feel like you're stumbling across too many any greens and don't know what to do with them, here are some good options. Corona bobbles are great for the final boss, getting Mithrix to stay where you want him for longer. We all know you can't aim, so why make it harder? If you feel like you're not healing enough from sides alone, then pick up a singular leeching seed. I don't know how you'd need more healing, but I know what I'm working with here. If you find yourself taking too much damage and need time for your tiny brain to recuperate, then an old war stealth kit is fine. And if all of those aren't to your liking, then pick a wax quail. The more movement you've got, the better. Once you've picked up a couple of items and feel like you're getting somewhere, start the teleporter, kill the boss, pick up the last few items, and head to the next stage. Bonus info, because I know you're the kind of smooth brain idiots I'm dealing with here, I should probably let you know that time is far more important than items. By a lot! One of the main reasons why you morons struggle so much in the later stages of this game is because you spend far too long on each stage trying to scavenge literally every possible chest you come across. For a simple reference guide, you want to be spending around five minutes on each stage. That's it! Six at the most! By that point, you already want to be in in the next stage and working out where the teleporter is. Picking up an extra squid polyp or topaz brooch isn't going to make you that much stronger, especially if it took two whole minutes to pick them both up. Just in case you imbeciles hadn't noticed before, there's a permanent timer in the top right that happens to show, oh, I don't know, the fucking difficulty increasing? You don't have time to loot! Get the fuck out of there! Step 4. There's a gimmick that most of you are aware of on the fourth stage of each loop. Guaranteed legendaries. I'll be the first to say it, but for how much time it takes to get them, they're usually not worth it here. But if you really want one and just have to have that sweet, sweet red in your item list, then sure, go for it. You can either plop your hacking beacon down on the legendary chest when you first arrive, or destroy all the eggs to spawn in the alloy worshipper unit. If it feels like you'd be going really far out of your way to do this, then put short, it's not worth it. Regardless, if you 
do end up getting a red, then Brilliant Behemoth or Shattering Justice will both do fine. We're not working with Chance here, so the Clover is useless. Daggers aren't going to help us in the Mithrix fight, and the rest of them don't really assist our build well enough to warrant picking them up. Simplicity is key here. That being said, because we hit stage 4 at around the 15 minute mark and are now approaching the 20 minute mark, we're going to be coming across a lot more elites than before. Now is as good a time as any to pick up a few guillotines. Keeping your dumbass alive is also a requirement, so wax quails and feathers are always great choices. After picking up a few items, start the teleporter, kill a giant flaming noodle, and progress to the next stage. Step 5. By this point, you've probably stumbled across an equipment barrel, and if so, the vase is brilliant for being able to send you straight to the other side of this behemoth of a stage. If you can see the teleporter, there's nothing wrong with going straight there and not worrying about items. But if you'd rather pick up some more safety stuff, then no one's gonna blame you. I'd recommend more movement speed, teddy bears, and to prep for the Mithrix fight, some armor piercing rounds. This is why you can't have too many hoppo feathers. Once you've picked up around five bullets, start the teleporter, kill the boss, pick up the last items, and head for the moon. On another note, this is why the stealth kit's gonna save your useless ass. Step six. I'm splitting this final stage up into multiple parts so it doesn't hurt your tiny brain. Getting to Mithrix, each phase of the boss fight, and strategies in between, so listen the fuck up! There's a reason why I told you to get a bunch of movement items, and it's almost entirely so I don't have to watch you dawdle through this section. Once you've finally passed the threshold, just look up and point your crosshairs to the top lip of the above arena. Now hit your active ability and skip the entirety of the lower stage to go straight to Mithrix. It's that easy. I wasn't joking. Phase 1. Once the fight begins, you want to be spending pretty much all of your time chilling on these raised platforms. There's two reasons for this. One, Mithrix is as dumb as you are and keeps falling off it, giving you free time to shoot him and heal. And two, his shockwaves are much easier to dodge when up here. Like, they don't do anything. Even you can survive them. Just keep floating above his head using your hoppo feathers and he won't pose much of a threat. A few teeny optimizations to note here. When he yeets himself up into the stratosphere, this is the best time to throw your orbital strikes to the center of the arena. He stands still for long enough to get hit by all three of them and it helps speed up the fight a lot. Secondly, for some ungodly reason, Mithrix isn't like every other boss in the game and actually gets affected by your taser, so go figure. Chimera phase. Okay, this is the exact point in time that you should make note of three things. One, find the pillars that are stacked in a set of three. You're going to be using them to stay alive and safe during the final phase. Two, there are suddenly a lot of enemies running around and oh god they need to die. And three, how grateful you are that you got a whole bunch of movement speed and can now outrun literal bullets. This phase is a total pushover if you just keep moving and keep your eyes out for that stack of three pillars I mentioned earlier. Kill everything and get ready for Mithrix V2 to spawn. Phase two. This is is arguably the hardest phase that Mithrix has, and for good reason. He attacks faster, creates shockwaves and literal pillars of flame, all while other enemies are spawning in around him, and let's not forget this little number, shall we? It's a fucking nightmare, and you have two options here. Option one, stare at the three pillars and get yourself up there, only to become a sitting duck and feel terrified as his Lord Majesty starts Naruto running beneath you. Or option two, pull your fucking socks up and get ready for a boss fight. This is where the real fun begins. Phase 3. Once you've slain the Mighty King in all of his glory, immediately turn around and yeet yourself up to the top three pillars that I mentioned earlier. These pillars are one of the few spots that will keep you safe from his attacks. Your best bet from this point is to chip away at him with fully charged shots and get as much damage done as possible. Why? Because if he gets too close to you, Hoppo Games decided that it would be a great idea to limit your character's ability to look around and that you can't look directly beneath you. Without feathers, this fight looks like the most fucked up game of cat and mouse that I've ever seen. If you find yourself in this predicament, then your only option is to wait for your cooldowns to refresh and then yeet yourself to ground zero with the hopes that you won't die immediately. But, uh, it's not like he deals too much damage anyways. And we never picked up any DOTs, so it's not like we're gonna die from bleeding or burning anytime soon. Huh. Looks like he's a total pushover. Once you have enough of your items back, go back to the top and start whittling him down. You need to be careful to not accidentally kill him here and get his HP down to about 400. To do this, all you need to do is hit him with the edges of your shotgun blasts. This won't deal its full damage and it'll allow you to have better control over how much HP you remove. Once he's whittled all the way down, wait for him to start casting his orb ability and then hit him with the beacon. Easy as. And that's it! Now you can revel in the success of such a monumental task. If you like the idea of poetically watching as you die along with the moon explosion, then be my guest. Just remember that when you use your brand new fandangled ability to not stand in its radius, unless you want to feel what it's like to get hit by a two-ton pole made of solid steel at 40,000% damage.